and became internationally renowned as Stevie Wonder, the 12-year-old genius. Many years and 14 Grammys later, at the age of 34, this musical legend has changed the face of the record industry. What are you telling us with your music, Stevie? Well, Songs in the Key of Life, uh, the album itself, and I guess I, I can say Songs in the Key of Life has been somewhat what many, if I can uh, be so bold as to speak to some degree for other artists, we create um, from the experiences of life our songs. I don't know if we will ever write every song that, that deals with life. We can never write every key. We can never touch every single song in the key of life. But we can at least, in the time that we're given in life, do the best that we can do. You have been uh, uh, very straightforward about your blindness. Blind? <laughs> me? Are you telling me that I'm blind? <laughs> no, I'm not telling you that, because I know what you told Al Hibbler. <laughs> How did that situation go when you uh, first met Al Hibbler, who, for those who don't know, uh, was a great, who is a great artist who is blind? Yes, he did uh, the Unchained Melody um, back in, I guess, the, the uh, 50s, right? I am Ida B. Wells Barnett, editor and publisher of the Memphis Free Speech. I also started the anti-lynching crusade and proved that mob murders were not a necessary evil. When the NAACP was organized, I was a founding member. As I have said frequently, resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. I'm Dr. William Edward Burghardt Dubois, widely known as W.E.B. Du Bois. The Amazon region in South America is the site of an interesting sociological phenomenon. For centuries, the Bush Afro-Americans and Indians of Suriname have lived and fought side by side in the Amazon jungle. They share a 400-year legacy of triumph over slavery and have lived as free people ever since. Two black scientists from Harvard University, Dr. Alan Counter and Mr. David Evans, have studied the two cultures for over a decade. Their rare and meticulous research has not only provided the scientific community with valuable information, but has also brought Afro-Americans one step closer to their heritage. In a moment, part two of Black and Red, The First World. We have interacted with, lived with native Amerindians as well as Bush Afro-Americans. And we have learned a great deal. We actually hope to continue this work for years to come because every day brings about a new facet of life in the rainforest that we find not only interesting, but informative and indeed educational. We think we can learn a great deal from the traditional cultures of the Bush Afro-American and Amerindian people of the South American rainforest.